Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Cloud Native Live. My name is Mario Loria. I am here with Victor Farsik, and this is a really, really special episode for me. Um, it's going to be my last episode, possibly uh, indefinitely. I don't, I don't know. We'll see what next year brings. Um, I'm going to take the fall and soak up the amazing KubeCon that we have coming uh, before us, KubeCon North America and Cloud Native Con. Um, but thank you so much for taking the time today and, and joining us. Uh, Victor and Upbound, especially the cross-plane project, are, are, is probably one of my favorite projects in the Cloud Native ecosystem because of the, the focus on shifting left, uh, the developer experience, and giving more autonomy um, to developers to provision and handle infrastructure components that they need uh, and depend on, um, and taking more off of SREs. Uh, so I could talk about cross-plane all day, um, but that's not what we're here for. Victor is here as a, uh, a freshly minted advocate uh, for Upbound, the company behind Crossplane. Um, and if you don't know what Crossplane is, the, the the one sentence is you can provision infrastructure with Kubernetes YAML. Uh, and that's the very thin. You should definitely go to the documentation, crossplane.io. Um, Victor, uh, I know him as a very, very huge uh, member um, and advocate for the entire cloud native community. Uh, I was listening to him the other day while exercising uh, for his DevOps Paradox podcast, which he has some great guests on and talks about some some really awesome technical and, and more high level, uh, maybe even leadership components as well uh, in the industry. Um, I Victor is one of my favorite people. I'm so glad to have him today. Without further ado, here's Victor Farsik to uh, to introduce and bring us compositions on Crossplane. Thank you. That that was so much prize that my face is <laughs> starting to get red. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. I'll, uh, I'll I'll plan to interrupt you plenty and make your face even redder a little later on um, with, uh, oh, with yeah. my dumb questions. Um, yeah. One last thing to audience, please leave in in your platform of choice. Leave any uh, any questions and comments and thoughts on what Victor's talking about today or cross plane, and, and I'll I'll stop him and try to have him answer those for you. So. Yeah, that that would be really awesome. Kind of if we, if you, if we can make this interactive instead of me just you know talking talking talking, that would be absolutely <laughs> absolutely. Awesome. So the more you can inter the, the more you interrupt me, the better. So you already heard the, the interaction. My name is Victor. I work for Abound. We're a company behind cross Crossplane and a few other things. Uh, but today's subject is uh, is Crossplane. So. If you're not familiar with Crossplane, the explanation that uh, Mario just gave is essentially correct. It is a way to manage infrastructure from inside Kubernetes. And uh, you might be asking, OK, so what is the benefit of that? Why, why is that better than whichever other tool you might be used to manage uh, infrastructure? And the answer is relatively simple. And that is uh, cloud native and Kubernetes ecosystem. Uh, almost everything that is happening right now today in, in industry is somehow levitating around Kubernetes, right? And that means that if you are managing something, whatever that something is, doesn't matter whether it's applications or infrastructure, this and that, uh, if you do that through Kubernetes, then you get basically out of the box certain features or certain benefits that either do not exist or are hard to accomplish outside like uh, you have automatic reconciliation and drift detection uh, high availability you have and this is my favorite an a, a single api to manage everything basically right uh, usually when people talk about kubernetes the first association is hey i can run containers and my first association is i have an api that I can use to do whatever I need to do, right? Uh, and on top of all the features that everybody knows and loves in Kubernetes, uh, there is the ecosystem, right? Uh, if you want, and I'm really now talking in general, even though that flows into Crossplane, hey, if you would like to uh, manage your stuff using GitOps principles, yes, there are tools, and they happen, most of them, to be Kubernetes-based. If you want... Um, Monitoring, again, Kubernetes. If you want uh, service mesh, again, Kubernetes. So for us, it was very important that the tool that we are building, which is essentially and mostly focused on infrastructure and, um, and services, it's, it's hard even to distinguish what is a service, what is infrastructure. Anyways, infrastructure and services 
that that something is done in the Kubernetes native way so that we can leverage Kubernetes scheduler, that we can uh, leverage the control plane, ecosystem, and all the stuff that we learn to love uh, and we are all adopting, right? And now on top of those goals, for us, it is very important the, the idea that we can uh, shift left the workloads or to put it in other words, that we can enable almost everybody to do almost everything, right? And there are many, depending on the aspect of what we are enabling, there are many different projects and crossplane falls into that category uh, when, it, when we are talking about infrastructure. So, and, and in general, when we speak about those things, uh, usually either we get something uh, flexible that is hard to understand by everybody but a few specialized people in that something, or we get something opinionated that is great. Hey, you can pick it up out of the box and everybody can use it as long as that opinionated something fits into what you're doing, which more often than not doesn't do, right? And we are trying to accomplish actually both goals. And what I mean by that is something that is extremely flexible for sysadmins of SREs of DevOps. And I don't know anymore how people call themselves these days, but people who manage infrastructure and services. And instead of having an opinionated tool that could be adopted by everybody, we want to enable those experts, let's say, to create opinions for the rest of the people in their company. Company, And we do that with what we call composites. So in a way, you can use Crossplane directly and define a YAML manifest, and I will show you that in a few seconds, that uh, through which you define uh, your infrastructure, a cluster, networking, database, whatever you're having, or you can create a composite that says, hey, I need all this. All, all those things are unavoidable. I need all those 500 different resources in AWS, for example. But I'm going to also create an interface that will be consumable by others and greatly simplify how those others are consuming what I created. Right? And that's the whole story about, uh, that's the main idea behind composites. I think- Victor, I really, something. yeah, really, really quick. I, so what, what you're saying is, as we go on this journey to self-service, more intuitive UX driven sort of products that anybody can use, like you said, and, and I think about it as like, instead of everything being encapsulated in the SRE team and they have to do this and they're your dependency, they're your blocker, right? You, they have to allow you to do things or do things for you. You now have control to do that. What you're saying is compositions extends that even further and actually it helps you abstract away that complexity and more of a, maybe a templatized version. Maybe think of like a, a base common helm chart or something like that, right? For these um, compositions and things that you want to provision or that maybe all your Django services need a database of a certain type or something like that, right? Yeah, so think of it uh, like, think of it as, as SREs creating a helm chart and uh, mm -hmm. everybody in the company having freedom to fine tune that helm chart through helm values, right? And, uh, but that team does not necessarily want to deal with uh, all the complexities of everything defined in chart. Chart is kind of, somebody's in charge of creating that chart and you right. are tweaking. You have the level of freedom that you need through the, through the Helm values, right? Except gotcha. that we are not talking about Helm charts, but the idea is somehow s similar that somebody similar. can package. So think of, let's say that your company consumes uh, AWS to say something. Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, your developers want to use AWS. Now, your developers are not going to create VPCs and subnets in the Internet Gateway and uh, all right. those things, but also they do not want to open a Jira ticket every time every <laughs> single detail exactly. is needed so that you do it for them. And you, don't, you probably don't want to do it yourself either because my, in my head, at least, the job of an SRE or whatever the title is, is not really to fulfill the requests of others, but to create tooling that enables the others uh, to manage everything in a way that is agreed in a way or simplified to the level that does not provides freedom without complexity that is not understood in a way. Right. That, that, that is the, that's the clincher right there. That is the statement of the year. That is what SRE team should be about. Uh, they should not turn into, I like to say, glorified support teams. 
they more so teams that are blockers and dependencies in getting things done in shipping. We should instead build the tooling to automate uh, and provide more power, more flexibility, more metrics um, to the people that actually own the services, i.e. the coders, the service owners, the, the developers. So, um, so uh, really quick, we have, um, I think Ahmet, uh, who said, hi, Victor, following your YouTube closely. Great content, got your post on uh, Udemy as well, but it's a bit outdated now. I think that's a call out on you, Victor. You gotta, you gotta keep those updated, come on. Give us the latest and greatest yeah. content. <laughs> So the reason why it's not updated is because, you know, when you make a course that is like uh, 10 hours long, it mm -hmm. takes a year to create it. And by the time uh -huh. you can publish, it's deprecated. So it's I switched to YouTube shorter, shorter kind of like uh, shorter Absolutely. model. And it's up to date now. For I'm sure. Keep on, keep on that YouTube, Victor. Um, and Ahmed uh, mentioned too, you know, you talk about how uh, to approach generally having a dev staging production workflows in the same cluster. I'm gonna, let's put that on the table for now, Victor. I want you to get into compositions and we can maybe circle back to what these kind of disparate environments and how uh, you know these, these changes that you're trying to test can then bounce through and, and graduate to production. So I'll, I'll shut up. <laughs> Sounds great. Shall we switch it to a demo? And uh, see it in action instead of me talking, talking, talking. Uh, yeah, oh, okay, I see. There's the screen, right? So let me first show you uh, how I would use Crossplane to manage infrastructure without compositions, right? Directly me with Crossplane without having any SRE or any sysadmin or any infrastructure person in between. And it could look something like this. For example, if I would like to um, create a GK cluster with Crossplane, I would create it as a, I would define it as a set of Kubernetes resources, just like anything else in Kubernetes. This is Kubernetes custom resource definitions. And in this case, I would say, hey, I want the GKE cluster. This is the name of the cluster. This is where it's going to run. Uh, this is the late, uh, this is the version that I want of that cluster. And I will create a node pool in certain locations. That node pool will be reference, referencing the cluster. So basically it becomes a node pool of that cluster. And a few other things like preemptible, machine type, uh, auto scaling, and all the stuff that we all uh, like, right? Uh, so this is equivalent to how you would do things uh, with other tools, except that this is YAML and these are Kubernetes resources instead of being uh, whatever else you might be used to. So we are basically assuming that Kuben that you or the potential user as uh, adopted Kubernetes API is the de facto standard to do whatever needs to be done, or to be more precise, to define the state of whatever is needed uh, through it. So I have that uh, definition, and this is intentionally simple. I will show you more complex definitions in a second. Uh, in a real world situation, you would not have only those two, you would have a bunch of other things because it looks easy when you create, let's say, a Kubernetes cluster in a, using console, click, click, click. But realistically, there are many other things that we need there. But we're starting simple, right? So if I would want to create that, I would do something like this. This is just like with any Kubernetes uh, type of resource. Uh, I'm going to apply it. File name is going to be GKE YAML. And, uh, and uh, off we go. Now, nothing here just happened. For a simple reason, because before I started, uh, before I came to this session, I already applied this resource to speed things up. So uh, instead of you waiting for, I think it takes like six, seven minutes until a uh, cluster is created in GK, GKE. But what I can do is basically now, since those are Kubernetes resources and not some random stuff, I can do other Kubernetes stuff that I normally do, like, hey, get managed which is a shortcut to get all the many resources managed by Crossplane. And here you can see, yes, uh, just like querying pods or deployment or anything else, yes, I have a GKE cluster uh, definition being applied in my Kubernetes cluster. Uh, let's say that we are talking about two clusters now, a control plane cluster where I'm running Crossplane and a cluster that I just created. And I have a node pool, I can see the statuses, they're all ready, they're all synced, they're all running, and so on and so forth, right? Now, 
Uh, the, the thing with that one is uh, that uh, those definitions can tend to be complex, right? Not because crossplane is complex or it's not complex, but simply because there's a lot of things that we need to think about when creating infrastructure. And if you want to shift left to enable everybody else in an organization to uh, self-manage, we need to reduce that complexity. But we need to do it in a way that uh, we cannot just buy something off the shelf, reduce complexity, because that would not take into account all the special things that everybody has in a company. But the whole idea is that uh, we can use definitions similar like what I showed you, this Jackie YAML, and create compositions and then simplify everything else for everybody. And that simplification can look like this. So this is something that, uh, sorry, wrong one. This is something that a uh, developer or anybody else, every vast majority, 99% of the people in a company would consume. And this would be something called, in this case, composite Kubernetes cluster. So this is a custom resource that I as SRE defined for everybody who wants to use, uh, who wants to manage Kubernetes clusters in my company, in my organization. And there are a couple of interesting things here. To begin with, I can specify the name of the composition. So in this case, the name is cluster Google, but I also created the uh, implementation of the composition for cluster in AWS, cluster in Azure, uh, Alibaba, wherever, right? So a potential consumer, the end user of this can just go and pick wherever they want cluster to be created without really knowing the details about that specific plat platform. And then there are a couple of parameters that my end users can use. Uh, there is a size of the nodes version and the minimum number of nodes. Now for the size of the nodes, the values you can see in the comment can be small, medium, large. So this is all custom, right? This, none, none of those things come out of the box. This is what I created for everybody else in my organization. And the sizes are small, medium, large, meaning that uh, if you use AWS or any other provider, you know that those sizes do not exist but composition, crossplane itself will make sure that small is converted to something, T2 something, and medium will be converted to something else. But I'm imagining a situation where vast majority of people do not want to care about, hey, is it T2, T3, which type of, uh, of zillion of nodes in AWS or Azure or Google we're talking about? No, it's simple. Do you want small? Do you want medium? Do you want large? Which version of Kubernetes do you want? And what is the minimum number of nodes? I set intentionally minimum because I assume that the cluster is expandable and that uh, it will start with certain number and potentially grow over time with cluster out to scalar. So uh, not the specific number of nodes, but minimum. Now, those two are commented, meaning that they have default values. If you as a, as a developer or QA or tester or whatever you are, if you don't care about version and mid, uh, minimum number of nodes, you do not need to set and then this definition would just have the node size. Or you could leave that to the default as well. All those parameters are optional or not, depending on how you de design it. And finally, once the cluster is created, I want, the, I want a Kubernetes secret that is to contain the credentials on how I can connect to that cluster. And I'm specifying that it should be uh, that it should be created in a namespace called team A and that the name of the secret will be cluster, right? So this is basically that end result interface that uh, I created and everybody else in my company can consume to self-manage their own clusters and limited them, limiting themselves to the things that matter uh, while leaving the complexity somewhere else, somewhere outside of, of all that. Now, uh, if I create that, I would say um, I could do it something like uh, I'm now a developer, right? I could use the definition and do just kubectl apply dash dash file name uh, cluster dot yaml and my cluster was created. And I can watch what's going on by doing kubectl get managed. And here we go. And you can see the cluster from before that I created earlier. And now you have a cluster, the new one that is right now it's synchronized, meaning that Crossplane got the information and it is uh, 
currently working on make provisioning it, uh, and it is not yet ready. And once the cluster is ready, then the node pool will be created, and all, all all the stuff that we need around the infrastructure for this specific case, right? So I will leave that running in the background uh, because that will take a few minutes, and now switch to uh, switch to the point of view or the how that same uh, set of features would be seen from an S SRE perspective. And SRE would need two things. First is, a, is the definition, which is this one, right? This is, uh, this is a XRD or composite resource definition that defines the new custom resource in Kubernetes, the one that I showed initially, right? The one that allows everybody to um, create and manage their clusters and basically what I'm doing here is that I'm saying, hey, uh, there will be a custom resource definition that will be called composite Kubernetes clusters, cluster uh, or claim Kubernetes cluster. So depending on permissions I want to give to people that can manage their infrastructure on a, a with cluster-wide permissions, which is most of the time not a good idea, or create claims, just like when you're claiming uh, volumes and then you're limited within your namespace and then the, whichever other a restriction somebody imposed. Now, the important part here is the open API schema, right? So I'm defining a completely schema for a completely new Kubernetes resource that will have uh, uh, some parameters. And uh, those parameters will be properties with version, node size, and min node count. So those are the same properties that uh, you saw earlier when I was consuming the end result of all that. So I defined as SRE, I defined uh, XRD or composite resource definition uh, that defines the interface that everybody else would consume. And then what I did is I created implementations of that uh, XRD or composites. I created one for Azure. So if somebody would want to create a cluster in Azure using that simple definition, uh, this is what would happen, right? I would create an AKS cluster. It would have certain uh, parameters uh, defined and hard coded because those. Let's imagine that nobody in my company is changing the region. We are all running in one region, so why would you bother, right? Uh, this is the DNS name prefix. This is the default version, the default number of nodes, the default uh, uh, size of nodes, and then we have patches. Now this is what. Uh, what gets converted from that interface that uh, I was consuming at the very beginning. This is how we are all writing those values. And, and that's about it. Now, Azure is the simplest one. I'm going intentionally from the simplest to the more complex. And then we have GCP, which is slightly more complicated, which defines two resources uh, in that composition. Says, so hey, okay, so whenever somebody wants a cluster that is in Google, then it needs a GKE cluster and it needs a node pool. And whenever somebody wants the same thing, but in AWS, and this is now going to be painful, this is what we need, right? Uh, like whenever we create a cluster in, uh, in AWS, we need a route table, we need a gateway, we need a subnet and another subnet and more subnets and um, security groups and VPCs and uh, some role attachments and more attachments and more attachments. And then what else do we have? And a node group, and finally an EKS cluster, right? So mm -hmm. this is- Victor, I, I love this because you're showing how much work the SRE team is doing for everybody else exactly. behind the scenes. Yeah, th this is this is what he's talking about. Like he's abstracting, you were abstracting the wake of the complexity by making some safe general assumptions about the environment we find ourselves in, how we use the infrastructure as a service platforms, AWS, GKE, right? And we're doing that for you so that as a developer, you can just say, I just need a cluster and I need it to, you know, be able to support my workload uh, with this maybe CPU and memory or whatever, whatever it might be, right? Some basic pieces. Um, there are articles I have read on this many, many times on the leveraging of CRDs and creating a, a sort of like homegrown cross plane, if you will. Um, there's a great one from Pinterest uh, engineering on building a Kubernetes platform. You can look at even Borg. Um, it's the actual uh, configuration is incredibly simple for the end user. 
in just getting a workload onto this platform. And that's what we're, that's what Victor is showing here. So very nice. Thank you, sir. I know um, there is a few mentions here in chat about um, Fargate. It looks like uh, Dan Magnum, also from Upbound, um, a, uh, a coworker of Victor's, uh, a great, great person. I think we've had him on before, uh, is handling answering some of those questions. And it looks like Fargate is supported in Crossplane. So that's awesome to see. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, Fargate is supported. And thanks, Dan, for uh, chiming in. Anyways, uh, so all that complexity, right? These are hundreds of lines of YAML, and this is still a simple solution. Uh, Mario, you probably know that kind of like it's even more complex than this. Gets reduced for the end user to this, bare minimum. I could actually reduce even those 20 lines to 10. Basically, essentially, I can say, hey, I just want a cluster in Google or AWS or whatever. So, and, and that solves an important problem, I believe, because either you, Mario, as an SRE, would need to do all that work to create that cluster for, the, the, for others because others are unlikely to learn all this. And even if they learn that they will want to spend the time to that, or others would need to create clusters through you, some web UI where I, I don't want to enter why that is bad, right? <laughs> uh, anyways, so where was I? Uh, let me see. Uh, yes, yes, yes. So, and finally, once we create that completely new resource definition, we can use something like kubectl, explain, composite, uh, uh, what is it? Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes cluster, that's uh, recursive. And if anybody doesn't know which are the parameters allowed, you can output. Uh, this is just another custom resource definition and see, hey, yeah, so the, where is it? The specification is that we need parameters with those three parameters. This is what I can use uh, and off I go, right? Uh, it does require some minimal Kubernetes uh, understanding, but really, really minimum, right? Now, uh, Another thing that we get through that custom resource definition is something like get uh, composite Kubernetes clusters, I clusters, and we can see, so this is now the output. This is a completely new resource that never existed before that was created by that SRE. And I, as a developer or whatever my role is, I can, I can actually skip even looking at uh, VPCs and this and that. I can just go straight into that resource definition and I get a custom output uh, that I defined, uh, which in this case, and it can be anything. Hey, control plane, is it running? Yes. Not pull, running? Yes. Is it all ready? Yes. Uh, what is the name of the composition cluster? Google, off you go, right? Uh, it can get as simple or as complicated depending on the design and agreement uh, between SREs of every, everybody else. Now, uh, Another thing that is happening over here is that we can uh, update our cluster. So, for example, I can do gke.yaml. I can say, uh, let me see, what should I do here? Um, minimum number of nodes should be, let's say, two. Right? That in, a, in the same way as you would deal with any other uh, Kubernetes type of resource, you update the manifest. And you do kubectl apply dash dash file name gke.yaml. Or even better, I'm for simplicity, I'm for simplicity, I'm executing kubectl apply. Uh, I don't think that anybody should do even that. In ideal combination, you should have that gke yaml or your definition, and you should be modifying it and you should be pushing it to git. And from there on, tools like Argo CD or Flux or whichever you're using for synchronization between Git and Cluster would uh, kick in. And that would mean that you as the end user, you would not even need to uh, have kubectl, you would know about Kubernetes. All you have to know is this is the interface, this is the YAML, I push it to Git, Argo CD, Flux, whatever synchronizes with my control plane cluster and then things just appear. But in this case, I didn't do that. Uh, I was too lazy, I think, for, to set it up for this demo. So I just uh, did kubectl apply. And if I uh, go, let's say, let me go, for example, to my tricky uh, console, just to prove you that that's really happening. 
Uh, if I go to Kubernetes engine, you should see two clusters. The first one that I created without, sorry, this, this one that I created without composites and this one that I created uh, through composites, simplified version. And you can see the, it's up and running. It's all, wow. all it's good. That's right amazing. Now, no, Victor, like, I just want to stop for a second. What he just showed is that as an SRE team, if you have a new policy or a new minimum or maximum, like he showed, uh, or some other change to how you're, you want your clusters to run, how you want them to be executed, what this what this means is you can make that um, in that, uh, that abstraction that you're defining and the compositions will inherit that automatically, right? And everything Correct. will be up to, exactly. Everything will be up to um, up to your desired state, pretty much automatically. Um, there's a question here, really quick, Victor. As you you showed sure. your QCTL commands and you 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 got the uh, that cluster composition object. Um, there's a question: which one, which of the CRDs are namespace specific? And I actually had a wider question on if we it said like a developer had access to uh, a specific namespace, let's say it's just their name. So I have Mario, the Mario namespace. Could I use that namespace and deploy these uh, these composition um, objects to my, just my namespace and kind of be locked so that they're not cube system or they're not just generally in the default or something like that? How does that work? So uh, when we create a composite resource definition or XRD, basically there are two two things we define, I mean, more than two, but two important for this uh, question. We have uh, the kind, which is composite Kubernetes cluster, which is the one I'm using right now. Uh, and then there is claim names. So typically that type of user would not have permissions in my cluster, the one, the control cluster to execute anything on cluster level. So uh, in majority of cases, people would not have the ability to create composite Kubernetes cluster. Instead, uh, I would give them permissions to create claims in specific namespaces. Uh, and this is, th this is, I think, where crossplane comes, uh, shows its strength for a simple reason, for being a Kubernetes native type of infrastructure management tool, right? So you would, okay. You would create a namespace. You would uh, choose your weapon of choice, like uh, either OPA Gatekeeper or Kaverno to set up policies in that in that control right. cluster, right? Not the clusters that we are creating. Control cluster. Those are the policies. Those are the namespaces. All the stuff that you normally do, and uh, give give a you give a person or a group of people access to that namespace and say, hey, this is what you can do in in that namespace and nowhere else. And among other gotcha. things. A, a, you would say, hey, you can create claims for Kubernetes, in this example, for Kubernetes cluster, mm -hmm. right? Gotcha. Okay. <clears throat> and okay. you could even, you could, one more thing very quickly. Uh, uh, if you combine it with policy management, you could say, uh, hey, uh, in the namespace A, you can create clusters with uh, five nodes. And in namespace B, you can create clusters with 500 nodes because those are the policies and policies are acting against uh, Kubernetes resources. And this happens to be a Kubernetes resource. Gotcha. Okay. That's incredibly powerful. I actually did not know any of that at all. So if you hear what Victor just said, you have that control, you can dial in what a namespace can and can't do. Uh, maybe one namespace can create clusters and another namespace can create uh, RDS instances, right? Whatever it might be in terms of provisioning and cloud resources, uh, other Kubernetes clusters. When, when Victor too, uh, says a control cluster. He's just talking about the cluster like he's interacting with right now where he's creating these custom objects. Um, and, yes. and that cluster is then cross lanes running and creating, you know, the cluster for you that that um, the created object, right? It's, which is a different cluster, obviously, right? Yeah, um, so it's kind of control what? cluster where the tooling is and then you create the rest of the infrastructure around it. Right, right, gotcha. Um, one, last, one last question on that. So, um, in terms of access, so I've created my cluster with my cluster composition. Um, how do I get, like, how would I go and set up kubectl and, and all the rest so I can start interacting with that cluster, with that resource? And this is kind of the same for, like, if I was creating an RDS instance or anything like that. Like, how do I get the, the details I need to be able to interact with that, maybe for my laptop? Is that kind of a, a more, like, a, a ma more manual set of steps? Um, or, you know, how does Crossplane enable maybe that to be a little easier? 
to enable you to access the cluster that you created yourself. Yep. Is, yeah. So uh, it kubectl uh, uh, does cross plane and system. No, it's not that dash. It's dash namespace cross plane system get secrets, right? Uh, so and again, it depends on how you define your composition, right? Uh, let me see. I made a mistake somewhere. I ah, know. Upbound. I'm using upbound version of it. Uh, system get secrets, right? So if you look at, uh, let me find it. Where is it? Uh, get an S. Where did I put? Uh, ah, yeah. Almost there. Team A. Yeah, so you see here in the team A namespace, uh, I have a, I have a secret called cluster, and that secret contains all the uh, all the authentication I would need to use to connect to that cluster, either myself or cross plane to do additional actions in that cluster because I could connect cross plane with Helm, for example, to install some stuff in that cluster through cross plane right. or me as a user. So, and now again. Uh, this secret happens to be called cluster because that's how I defined that it should be called in um, composite uh, definition, right? right? And that secret okay. can be anything because, and this is important, I think, you as SRE, you're in total control of what is really happening. Should there be a secret mm -hmm. with authentication or not? Should it be namespaced or not? Should it contain this or that? Yeah. Now, how gotcha. you would this, this is it? great how you would get it uh, if you don't want to consume it as a secret but in some different way then you would need to create a script or something that i don't know outputs the right. secret and sends an email where this is your <laughs> and then get fired for sending that on email <laughs> yeah i was just, i was just thinking like you could maybe even do something in a pipeline where like the pipe like let's say that you've got a feature branch and you're actually spawning cross plane and you're spawning a ephemeral environment and that is a new cluster right and it's got some resources in it um, and then obviously you might want to access that cluster to interact with it um, during the the time frame where you're you know testing some you, you know the feature and, and maybe someone else wants to look at it or, or you want to play around with some of the processes whatever it might be maybe the pipeline can then surface those those uh, credentials to you somehow or send them in Slack or whatever it might be where you can then just easily just send you I mean send you a cube config right and then you can start interacting from your laptop. Um, depending on yeah. networking and all those other all those other pieces, um, Mevic asked uh, about having two control plane clusters using GitOps syncing on the same repo. Um, would it create multiple cloud resources? And, and Dan Magnum came to the rescue and said, um, you know, cross plane will uh, kind of assume control of an existing resource, uh, but he would not recommend that either. I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, that gets yeah. into HA and all that other stuff. So, Mevic, thank you for bringing the hard hard hitting questions. Um, and Dan, thanks, thanks for answering those. Victor, I'll let you continue, but this is this is really exciting. I did not know that you could easily get, it was just a secret, really, just the, the cluster connection details. Exactly, but one thing about that secret, my favorite use case is that actually, I do not give that secret to anybody. Uh, ideally, if we would be talking about clusters, I would create a cluster uh, with Crossplane and then with Crossplane install Argo CD and give users uh, mm -hmm. brand new repo and say, hey, you, you, you cannot access the cluster. You can push Absolutely. stuff to it. Right. Uh, that's the ideal right. combination. Nobody gets access it's... to the cluster and nobody gets, uh, and everybody still can do whatever they need to do. Yep, yep, that's that's true GitOps. That is declarative instead of imperative. That is some of the core principles of, of DevOps and SRE. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut up now. Victor, continue um, enlightening us. This is really, really cool stuff. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, one more thing, actually, I will try to keep it short. So that in case there are more questions, I hope that there are. But uh, the, what did I want to do? That's not what I wanted to do. I didn't want to go to here. Uh, I'm getting lost. Uh, where did I want to go? Go. Yeah. So uh, in the meantime, let me see what's the status of my cluster. Uh, yeah. So another thing that uh, I think that this is the last thing that I will show. Uh, 
uh, we have also out since we are talking about Kubernetes and we are talking about uh, fully automated and constant feedback loop, meaning that there is a constant uh, drift detection and reconciliation. So, if I happen to have uh, access to, in this case, to Google Cloud Console, uh, and uh, I go here, this will, I will this will be actually the first question I will ask uh, the audience. And uh, I go here, edit, and change, for example, this to number three. Uh, and uh, if I enable auto upgrade and save, can anybody guess what will happen? Nothing. So, I mean, yeah, I was yeah, going to go say ahead, nothing sorry. because, right? No, no, no yeah, I, I, I'm speaking for the audience in this case. No, no one said anything <laughs> yet, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna be that, that person. Um, nothing should happen, right? This is the team A cluster. This is managed by Crossplane, right? And it's, it's more so managed by that, that core base template conf configuration that we're talking about, right? That core composition, and that composition doesn't say that we're okay to upgrade things, right? So imperative changes should not get applied. That's how I think. Uh, Yes, m m almost. I mean, they will be applied because I literally applied them in Google Cloud, but Crossplane will undo those changes. Uh, uh, so something will happen, right? Because I did actually go directly to Google behind uh, uh, Crossplane's back. It, it's, it's equivalent to, let's say that I created a deployment with three pods. It would be the same as if I uh, deleted one of the pods. I can't delete the pod, but Kubernetes a few seconds later will figure out that I did that, <laughs> it'll catch on. Yeah. To, to three. Love it. Okay. The same thing with okay. uh, with crossplane. Crossplane kind of, uh, and, and I think that this is something special that hardly any tools in that area have it. Uh, it's not only that we can create and manage infrastructure with crossplane, but crossplane uh, guarantees that the state that we defined is maintained always. Yeah. Uh, if you would it's... use any of the CLI based tools, then if I change the state directly, uh, that tool would undo th those changes only the next time I execute that CLI, which could be an hour later or a month later. Nobody knows. Right. So, so crossplane is inherently, just like Kubernetes in this case, a reconciliation loop, right? It is Correct. always looking at the current state and trying to apply or get to the desired state, right? Which is incredibly Correct. powerful. Correct. Excellent. So um, let's see whether there are more questions. Yeah, uh, I think Mevic was just asking about single points of failure for infrastructure provisioning. Um, okay, well, yeah, now's the time. Like, if anybody here is like, what does this even mean? Why does this make sense? What What am I trying to do with this? Um, we have some time here for questions, so please, please share them. Um, no question is stupid. I had a bunch of dumb questions for Victor before we started this. Um, and so, um, yeah, just, just ask, just ask away. And I know Dan's doing a great job. Um, while we're waiting, uh, crossplane.io, um, you can check them out on Twitter as well at crossplane underscore IO. Victor is also on Twitter. Uh, Twitter's where it's hopping for the cloud native community. Like you gotta be on Twitter. Yeah. Um, you gotta dial in that feed. You'll get some, you'll get some great news and thoughts and, and comments and you know philosophies as well. Uh, Victor's at V Farsec. Um, you should absolutely check out the DevOps Paradox uh, podcast as well that he does. Uh, yep, yep, his name, yep, our names are, wait, 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 yep, got it, got it, got it. Uh, at DevOps Paradox, um, that's, that's a great, great podcast. Um, uh, in addition to, I'm sure the Kubernetes podcast and many others out there, Kubelists uh, that, are, that are fantastic. Uh, is is Crossplane going to do its own podcast, or is it is it working on one? I know there's a YouTube. Um, yeah, there is uh, not yet podcast as if only audio, but uh, I took over part of uh, YouTube. So if you go to, awesome. uh, I don't know the others, but if you go to Upbound the YouTube channel, you will see me there at least once a week. Something new. Excellent. Once a week. Wow, that's awesome. Okay. Yeah, I see it here. And it looks like there's a Google group as well. And of course, the Slack channel for, for Crossplane. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, there's lots on the YouTube, actually. Uh, this is this is very cool. There's some great talks and great live streams. There's some great KubeCon talks as well on Crossplane, 
which I think is how I got a little bit more acquainted with it back in, gosh, 2019 North America um, in San yeah. Diego. I think, gosh, such a great, yeah, such a great time. I can't wait for, um, for LA. Hopefully it happens. Mevic comes in again. Sorry for too many questions. Do not be sorry. We like questions. Is there any way I can validate the composition specification? So I think this is kind of on the open API spec you were talking about a little bit, Victor, right? Yeah, uh, I'm not sure Dan might correct me. Uh, I don't think that there is a way to kind of like a tool that says validate this. Uh, you, uh, I mean, if there is an obvious that it doesn't fulfill specification, it, you will not be able to create it in the first place, uh, Kubernetes API. Uh, but on the other hand, whether you wrote version or version or whatever, uh, that's that's going to that that's we don't have a tool for that and then uh, after the specification when you create a composite uh it would uh, it would fail or not depending really on uh, what the what the error is gotcha okay so it's kind gotcha. of somewhere in between question as i'm looking at the upbound website again for those that don't know crossplane is a project uh by the company upbound of which victor is an advocate for um, and so I'm, I, I know upbound recently announced the universal control plane, uh, kind of the, the upbound cloud, Victor, can you give us kind of the, the TLDR on what that, what that is and what problems, uh, upbound is trying to solve and maybe more so how it's making cross plane, uh, more flexible and easier to use. So, yes, we have, uh, uh, built. To begin with the web UI uh, and a SaaS service. So you, if you go to cloud.abound.io, uh, basically you get uh, Crossplane as a service. Uh, and we are about to release that same, uh, and uh, we're about, I'm not sure about the naming yet, but uh, Enterprise Crossplane self-managed. So you can self-manage it or you can consume gotcha. Crossplane as a service. Uh, among other things, you can get hosted crossplane. So instead of me creating a cluster where crossplane is running, you just get two clicks and you have um, uh, crossplane up and running for you instead of setting it up yourself. Uh, there is a there is a interface web interface through which you can see all the resources graphically, all the things that I was doing with the uh, console. You can you can see it graphically. And there is also a way to package uh, your compositions and configurations and everything as containers and then push them there and from there on use it uh, in any way you like. And uh, on top of that, you know, support and basically we are building enterprise uh, version of, of that, uh, of Crossplane in a way. Gotcha. Not that's a way. very, very, very yeah, exciting. Not in a <laughs> yeah, that, that's awesome. That's really cool. Um, I'm, I think we're going to, my team at least is going to be trying to look at that Q1, Q2 of next year when we have a little bit more of our tech debt crunch and we're not, we're not so busy. Um, we, you know, I, I think we and many others, many other people I talk to are thinking about this. How do I get Esri out of this churn of um, these ad hoc requests, just kind of the maintenance of things at a certain level and how do we get to like we like you mentioned before so so eloquently uh victor building automated systems self-service tooling um and more insights and observability around our systems and providing that as a service as a product to the very engineers that depend on uh, our infrastructure right and that and then thus the sre uh you know moniker becomes something different in in what it is in so many organizations which is kind of a glorified devops cd sort of team that operates very similar to the way it did 10 15 years ago right um so yeah this is awesome <laughs> you know the, the way i see it is uh what aws or whatever your provider is is to sres is what sres should be to everybody else kind mm -hmm. of like you don't send an email to, to AWS saying, I need three nodes. <laughs> right. <laughs> AWS created an interface for you to create three nodes, which is just the level that you need. And now it's your job to create the interface for just the level that everybody else needs. Exactly. Yeah, it's all about that that new abstracted interface. Uh, I mean, I am not uh, someone who's not like encountered this. Like, I mean, months ago, uh, solving for ticket, like seeing Jira tickets that said, create RDS instance for service X, Y, and Z. 
right? Um, I mean, like this is this is a common thing, and it's more prevalent than you think. Um, I'm not seeing any more questions, uh, Victor. So I'm going to give you the floor. Is there anything that you've been thinking about around cross-plane leveraging this, or what? What is your next? What is the next thing that you know on the roadmap for cross-plane and you know, what is, what is kind of, do you have any special, maybe special announcements or, or major, major areas of usability that you're focusing on for the kind of the next iteration? So I have major announcements, which I cannot announce, but uh, <laughs> of course, if you watch, if you watch the uh, follow Abound or Crossplane anywhere, you will see it in approximately a week from now. Until wow. then, Excellent. I, I would get fired because and I don't, I, I still <laughs> want to stay in Abound. Uh, sure, good. But good. Well, apart from big announcements, what we are working on right now, there is a strong, huge focus on uh, provider coverage. So that uh, what the, the, the amount of providers and the coverage that you have with Crossplane is close to 100% of what major providers give, you know, AWS, Azure, Google, mm -hmm. Alibaba, whatever there is. And, and th that's on top of, there is a lot of, uh, providers that are contributed by a community and what's or not, uh, like see right. the other day we worked on it. But uh, the major focus now is to be uh, is to get as close to 100% as we can. Okay, gotcha. No, that's a big one. For those that don't know, providers are just uh, what the the providers, i.e., AWS uh, or maybe in AWS, like supporting Elastic Cash, right? Um, providers are exactly. just the interface to cross plane to interact with those sorts of resources and be able to then provision them, manage them for you through cross plane. And again, through the compositions you saw today. So um, that's awesome. I, I know providers, I mean, that's that's huge. Like main, main maintaining those providers has got to be painful. And it's not, you know, so for those that don't, like cross plane is a, a open source project. Uh, donated to the CNCF. Um, I'm not sure what stage it's actually at right now. It's got to be not sandbox anymore. Maybe I don't know. But uh, wait for a week. Wait. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm gonna stop talking. <laughs> um, out of turn. Uh, but uh, either way, either way, like you can contribute. You can file issues. You can, you know, if you find um, in GCP there is a resource that is not working well or it's not managed by Crossplane uh, like it should be. Um, you can help make that happen, make that a reality. Um, I know the Upbound team is doing so much work to keep these things maintained uh, and make sure that whatever you're provisioning, there is kind of full support, um, which is definitely tricky. So that's awesome. Um, <laughs> that, that's kind of, I think, important important thing. Uh, Crossplane is open source. So uh, uh, whenever somebody wonders, hey, who is maintaining this? It is an open source project. Uh, mm -hmm. So the community around it is maintaining whatever is being maintained. Upbound right. as a company, uh, let's say, have dedicated number of engineers working on open source, but it's not re it, sure. it is open source. So uh, whomever asks who is maintaining, I would say you. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Come to the come to the repo. Yeah, um, and Dan kind of answering Medic on you know what kind of how's the provider working? Uh, more details there. Uh, definitely check out what is the I think it's just Crossplane IO is the the GitHub, um, and you can find all of this on Crossplane.io website as well. I think Upbound.io is the company website. Um, I think it's time to to sign off. Um, we've covered a lot of ground here. Um, again. Check out Crossplane, Crossplane.io. My name is Mario Loria. Uh, you can check me out, MarioLoria.dev. Um, for now, this is my last Cloud Native Live. We'll see. I might, I might make a return in the future. Um, thank you so much to Victor and the Upbound team, uh, Dan Magnum as well, who's been answering those uh, those questions, um, and Victor, who's kind of newly minted there and, and already doing a great idea. I was, I was hoping to get him caught on like some things he wasn't quite sure on because he's so new. But uh, Victor uh, is an evangelist and loves this stuff just as much as I do. So it's great to talk to you again, Victor, today. This was fantastic. Thank you to the CNCF, um, Bill, Libby, and, and others who have made this happen. Um, and uh, uh, thank you so much for taking the, the, your time uh, in your busy day to tune into uh, another episode of Cloud Native Live. We'll be back next week. Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your day and week. Talk to you later. Bye. Cheers, everyone.